Returning to the world of kaijus, today we talk about one of, if not, the most Lovecraftian kaijus depicted in live action. The SH Monsters, Iris, or Iris if you want to go into English pronunciations. Iris. Iris is the main antagonist, depending on who you're asking, of the third film and acts as the antithesis to Gamera in which it grows over time as a human host and will stop at nothing in eliminating those that oppose it. And as Bandai and their monster slime with their Karukawa beast releases, Bandai does the wonders once again as this rendition of Iris just like Gamera possesses the screen accurate sculpt, the beautiful paint job, and the intricate design. When closely observing the head, it succeeds in replicating Iris's complex but emotionless design as the yellow orb at the center with the triangular shell that encompasses it is screen accurate to the brim, especially with the silver finish. Adding to Iris's faceless but Lovecraftian nature, this is added by the armor-coated silver neck with each planing placed on top of one another, allowing Iris to rotate his head at various angles in order to catch his prey from both the surface and air. Moving to the body, let's just say that Iris has RIS as the gems embedded onto the torso are a little too meticulously placed, which does not help with the slim outline, making even the likes of Darth Vader wet himself. And I have come for This is not mentioning the shoulder place as they are, which adds to Iris's intimidation factor, but is a pain in the ass when moving the arm as the bulk of the piece inhibits arm movement. But just like the rest of the body, it is superbly sculpted and painted, especially with the intricate net like mesh layers embedded onto the piece and the deferring paint jobs on both the inner and outer parts. And the backside of the torso is no slouch either, as the armor esque pieces are intricately placed on top of one another, which not only adds drip to Iris, but also makes makes it hard to touch, but it isn't the first for the monster arts. And when describing the arms, while not the most bulkiest of arms and looks anorexic next to the big G, they are well compensated with the blades attached in which not only are they massive and make Iris well versed in melee combat, but are durable to the extent where they can easily penetrate through Gamera's shell, making John Wick's pencil a run for his money. Moving below the belt, Iris has a pair of some t crystals encrusted legs that's able to support Iris's massive height and end with a pair of feet that are a hybrid between a hoof and a heel, which adds a few inches regarding height, but are also great when kicking, stomping, and wow. and that's about it. Wait, I think I forgot to mention something. <laughs> Iris is armed and ready with four tentacles in which the bottom is equipped with a smaller pair while the top possess the slightly larger pair. But regardless of size, the design and shape of the tentacles are similar to one another with the immense length that would make Shin Godzilla blush, the patents embedded onto the side, and the sharp laser blasters at the end. You've heard me right, laser blasters. As the orbs at the center emit little lasers in which the sharp edges can be open, allowing Iris to be a little Dalek Stop against me. both man-made targets and hostile kaijus. But a drawback regarding the tentacles are that they happen to fall off, probably due to the weight, so I'd recommend you use a hairdryer for the plastic or a double-sided tape. With the introduction of the previous Gamera figure, the Monstars figure, supported by Kadokawa, seems to up the accessory factor to what Monstars were initially, as the Gamma 3 figure and the Rebirth version were a load that could feed the entirety of North Korea. But Iris doesn't just abide to the standards left by Gamera. Instead, going above and beyond, dare I say, the most amount of accessories a single Monstars figure provided. First is a stand that has two separate holders, the first of which is the basic one that can hold Iris by the crotch during surface mode. But there is an additional holder for what, you might ask? Just like Gamera, INITIATE TRANSFORMATION Sequence! Do you know which one is which? Shit!
and here is Iverson's aerial dogfighting mode. And I gotta say, the splendor of our Lovecraftian Giga Chat is on show for the entirety of Japan to see, as the legs are tucked inwards with the knee blades on both sides, being replaced with their respective aerial forms, with the internal fibers being expanded to act as wings. And I have to say, those wings are just... Yes, the inner fibers are composed of a translucent plastic with the hues of blue, perfectly replicating iris as depicted in the film. And this lad here is just massive, not only outsizing Gamera in his flight mode, but even the likes of Biolante. But like previous people stated, think maybe he's compensating for something. <laughs> and in order to accommodate those massive wings, the second holder plays his pod in which the beauty of the flight mode can be displayed in its full glory. When regarding Iris's size, it is a tall lad in no big part to his shoulders, which aids in Iris towering over Gamera and even being almost equivalent to the King of the Monsters himself. As Iris stands at 17 centimeters or 6.7 inches tall, there's Iris next to Gunpla, SH Figots, Figma, Hyatt Toys, Gamera, and Gamera. When regarding kaiju maneuverability, if you've seen the films, you will know. It's both Gamera and Iris, at least when they're not CGI, were more or less stiff. But when looking at Gamera's figure, articulation was pretty good. So, shall we see whether Iris stands on par with Gamera? The head, thanks to the neck, can move down as well as up for engaging in surface-to-air combat. But regarding side-to-side -side movement, it is limited. The shoulder armor, attached by a ball joint, allows for some leeway for the arm movement. The arm movement, while poseable, is hampered due to both the shoulder plating and the blades. Elbows have a 90 degree span, of course no hand movement, while the chest and abdomen are their own separate piece. The makes a difference, while on the other hand, the waist movement is solid, making for some dynamic poses. While the back armor may look rigid and heavy, they are all connected by ball joints in which they possess a pretty fair range of individual movement. While the legs can move front and back freely, when it comes to a leg split, knees can bend up to 90 degrees, a fair feet movement, and the hooves have their own movement. And regarding the tentacles, as they are composed of 14 separate pieces, all of them ball joints, movement is really good, but the only downside are the loose joints in which result in the tentacles falling off a little too easily. Nothing a hairdryer can't handle. So when it comes to posability, it's on par with the high toys Godzilla, not as good as Gamera. So here we are at the end! The SH Monstars Iris is another marvelous figure in the Monstars line with a screen accurate sculpt, beautifully blended paint job, abundance in accessories, the intimidating size, and a second dogfighting mode, making it on par with the previous SH Monstars Gamera, and further solidifies my support for a Kadokawa produced SH Monstars figure. But the one gripe I have are the loose joints located on the tentacles as they happen to fall off a little too easily, which shouldn't be a factor for a figure that costs this much. But even so, I can't ignore the love and passion that were involved in creating this artistry, especially when the results are this good. A price is a big factor regarding accessibility to the kaiju fanbase. In doing so, if you're able, and I mean able, to afford this figure without selling an arm and a leg, I would recommend Iris here as it is a worthy successor to the SH Monsters Gamera and looks great next to both kaijus and anime waifus. In doing so, I'm going to give the SH Monsters Iris a ranking of an A.